Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday evening Bible reading. I uh, want to apologize for missing last week. We had our men's retreat at the church, and uh, time just kind of got away from me in preparation for that. So uh, I'm glad to be back and getting back into it. Uh, we are in Philippians chapter 2. So um, again, let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Like I said, I'm reading out of the NSRV, so uh, join me. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others to be better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in the appearance as a human. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even on even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work on your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in this world. Holding forth the word of life, so that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. But even if I'm being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and the service of your faith, I rejoice, and I rejoice together with all of you. In the same way, you also should rejoice and rejoice together with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be consoled by news of you. I have no one so like myself who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. All of them are seeking their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But Timothy's worth, you know, how like a son with a father, uh, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I trust in the Lord that I will also come soon. Still, I think it necessary to send you Ep Epaphroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for all of you and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed so ill that he nearly died, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but also on me, so that I would not have one sorrow after you. I am more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again and that I may be less anxious. Welcome him, then, in the Lord with all joy, and honor such people, because he came close to death for the work of the Christ, risking his life to make up for those services that you could not give me. All right, there are three parts that I want to um, focus on here and just kind of you know point out. Uh, the first one is in verses one through four, where Paul says, if then is there any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others better than yourself. Uh, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Now, the first part of this uh, section that I want to just point out is that Paul is telling us that we need to uh, we as Christians, we in the body of Christ, need to uh, have the same mind and being of the same love and being in one accord. Uh, with each other, which means we all need to focus on not the things that we think that we should be doing or or would like to do, but that we are constantly focused on looking towards 
uh, God and asking him, what do you want us to do with our lives? What do you want us to do as a church? What do you want us to do as a body of Christ? That um, our focus isn't trying to figure that out, what we think we should be doing, but we should be asking God in all things, what should what do you want us to do? Um, so we can all be on the same on the same page, basically, uh, as God, you know, that we are just working together, doing the same thing, following his plan uh, that he has set forth. And the second one is that um, when Paul says, do nothing of selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves and to look uh, not to our own interests, but the interests of others. Um, as we know, you know, Jesus, when he was here, he was always looking to to serve others. And in that same mindset that we should have the same thing, that we should be looking to serve others, that we should be looking for others needs above our own, that we should um, not always, you know, focus on ourselves, but be and having that inward focus, but having an outward focus. And that is even uh, just as important as a church that we not just have an, an inward focus at church, but we have an outward focus where we are looking to our community and seeing what we can do for our community and uh, and looking to their, their interests and what they need uh, so we can be that Christ-like example to them. Uh, the next part I want to look at is when Paul says, you know, in the next section, it says, uh, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And there are two points that I want to point out here of what, what it looks like to have the the same mind in, as Christ Jesus. And the first one is that uh, he emptied himself. Uh, it says in verse seven, uh, we need to look to empty ourselves of, of all things uh, us so we can have that be replaced with all things of God. Uh, Jesus was not someone who did things out of his own resource, but he did everything uh, out of the Father's resource. He, he relied on the Father for every aspect of life, uh, and we need to do the same. And the second part is in down in verse 8 where he says, He humbled himself to become obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Uh, being obedient isn't necessarily easy. Sometimes it's very hard. But if we want to uh, be the servants to Christ the same way that Jesus was, uh, we need to make sure that we are humbling ourselves, that when God comes to us and asks us to do something, that uh, we are willing to humble ourselves and that we are willing to be obedient no matter what what it is, um, even if it means that, you know, we need to, uh, to die. We want to make sure that we are, uh, that we are being obedient to, to everything that God, uh, comes to us with. The third thing that I want to point out is down in verses 14 and 15, where he says, do all things without murmuring or arguing so that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine like stars of this world. Uh, the first thing of that is to do things without murmuring and arguing. Um, I know I, I've been there myself where uh, I know I should be doing something and I do do it, but I do it with the wrong attitude. Uh, so what Paul's saying is we need to have not just do the things that we know we should be doing and what God has called us to do, but we also need to do them with the correct attitude. Um, because if if we're not doing with the correct attitude, somebody's going to see that, whether we know that they see it or not. Um, somebody's probably going to see our attitude in the way that we approach things. And then the last uh, thing that I want to just touch on here is that um, that we are to be without blemish in the midst of the crooked and perverse generation in which you shine, shine like the stars in the world. Uh, we are to look different than the rest of the world. And when we are able to have that same mindset as Christ and we are willing to be obedient and we are willing to have the right attitudes, uh, then we will be different from the the generation and the people in our world today. Uh, we will look different and we will shine like the stars of the world, as Paul says. So uh, I hope you're able to enjoy this and, and got some things out of this as, as I did. And I look forward to next week when we move on to uh, chapter three of Philippians. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed week. God bless.